Hello students and welcome to my channel Maths Hub. So today I'll tell you about the chromatic number in a graph. So let's come to the definition of a chromatic number. The chromatic number of a graph, it is the smallest number of colors needed to color the vertices of graph G so that no two adjacent vertices share the same color. It is most commonly denoted by chi of G. The chromatic number, it is that number which tells us about the smallest number of colors that are required to color the vertices of a graph G so that the adjacent vertices, they, bear the, they do not bear the same color, right? So let's take an example and let's see how to find out the chromatic number for a graph. So what do we do? We color the first vertex with the first color. Right. Then we consider the remaining n minus 1 vertices one by one and we do the following steps. Color the currently picked vertex with the lowest numbered color if it has not been used to color any of its adjacent vertices. If it has been used, then choose the next least numbered color. If all the previously used colors have been used, then assign a new color to the currently picked vertex. Right. So let's see how to find out the chromatic number. So this is a graph. You can see the vertices are marked by the alphabets A, B, C, D, E and F. So we need to find the chromatic number. So we need to find the number of colors which will be required to color this graph in such a way that the adjacent vertices do not be the same color. So first of all, let us start with vertex A and let us mark this with red color, right? So, we have used red color for vertex A. Now, you can see that which other vertices have been marked adjacent to it. A is adjacent to B, so B cannot be marked red. A is adjacent to D, so D cannot be marked red. A is adjacent to F, so F cannot be marked red. So, can I mark C red color? Yes. So, C can be colored as red because C is not adjacent to Similarly, we can also color vertex E with red color because E is not adjacent to A. So, E is also colored red, right? Now, we pick up a new color. Let's pick up green color for vertex B. So, B couldn't be colored red because B was adjacent to A. So, we color B with a green color. Now, if B is adjacent, if B is colored green, we can color D also with the green color because D is not adjacent to B. So, D is also colored green. Can we also color F with the green color? Yes. So, you can see that F is also colored green. So, all the vertices are now colored. So, what is the chromatic number? What is chi g for this graph? Chi g for this graph becomes equal to 2. Right? So, it's easy. So, now, so what we have done, we have just written the vertices A, B, C, D in the form of a table. And we started giving color C1 to color the vertex A. Then by the same method, we did C1. We gave C1 color to vertex C. We gave C1 color to vertex E also. Then we started with the new color C2. We marked vertex B with C2. We marked vertex D with C2. We marked vertex F with C2. Right? And this is how we get that the chromatic number of this graph becomes equal to 2. Right? Okay. So you can see this chromatic number in this graph. Okay. And now... Let's understand the Welsh power algorithm to color the graph. So the previous method that we have followed was a hit and trial method. So if the vertices are less in number, then you can easily adopt that method. But if it is a big graph, then that method is not applicable. Then we can do some error in that. So for that reason, we have a Welsh power algorithm for graph coloring. So what is the Welsh power algorithm? Let us understand it. The algorithm says step one is that you need to find out the degree of all the vertices present in the graph. Then arrange the vertices in the order of decreasing order of their degree. 
right? So in the decreasing order of the decrease, that means from biggest to smallest will arrange the vertices. Then use one color for first vertex and color them in sequential order. Each vertex on the list that is not adjacent to a vertex previously colored with that color. Step 3, start again from top of list and repeat the third step using the second color. So repeat until all the vertices are colored and once we are done, we will get the number of colors that are required to color the graph. Right? So now, let's apply this algorithm to this question. Right? So the first step is, let's find out all the vertices, the degrees of all the vertices and let them put them in the order, descending order, right? So, we have vertex V1. V1 has degree 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, right? Then V2 has degree 1, 2, 3. V3 has degree 1, 2, 3. V4 has degree 1, 2, 3, 4. V5 has degree how much? 1, 2, 3, 4. V6 has degree 1, 2, 3, 4. V7 has degree 3. V8 has so there is only V7. Right? Now let us arrange these vertices in ascending order. So in, uh, sorry, in descending order. So when we arrange it in descending order, we get the first vertex V1 with degree 5. Then we will arrange all the vertices with degree 4. So we have V4, we have V5 and we have V6. And then finally we have degree 2 that is degree 3 that is V2, V3 and V7. So according to their degrees, we have arranged all the vertices. Right? Now, according to the wedge power algorithm, we will start with the first vertex in the line. So, V1 is the first vertex. So, let us mark this vertex with a blue color. Right? So, I have used blue color for V1. Now, when I have used V1 with a blue color, mark V1 with a blue color, I can see that V3 cannot be marked blue, V4 cannot be marked blue, V6 cannot be marked blue. V5 and V2 cannot be marked blue. So can we mark V7 with a blue color? Yes. So V7 has been marked with a blue color. Right. Next in the list we start with V4. Let us choose red color for V4. Now when I have marked V4 with red, clearly V3, V6 and V5 cannot be marked red. So, V2 in the list can be marked with a red color. So, let's color V2 with a red. Now, let us choose the next color. And let us mark V5 with a green color. You can see that V5 in the list is next. So, we mark this with green. If V5 is marked green, we can color V3 with a green color. Right? Okay. Now, can we also mark V6 with a green color? No. Because V3 and V6 are adjacent, so we cannot mark V3 with a 6. So, we choose the next color and let me mark V6 with a purple color. So, I can see that all the colors, all the vertices in this graph has been colored. And how many minimum colors did I use? I used so, the chromatic number for this graph becomes equal to, right? So, I hope the algorithm is clear. So, there are only two steps. First of all, write down the vertices degree, arrange them in descending order, and then starting from the first graph, first vertex, start giving the colors, right? Okay. So, now... Then try this exercise and the answers is already given in this slides only. So you can check your answer later on after doing this question and you will find that the chromatic number for this graph comes out to be 3. Right? 
So thank you so much. So those of you who haven't subscribed yet, do subscribe my channel for getting the latest update. And believe in yourself and you will be able to succeed. Thank you so much.